from the team you can trust. This is breaking news from News 8. Breaking this morning, according to police, a young man drowned at a park in Scottsville late last night. Officials believe this was an accident. Eric Hedekost is live from that park with much more on this tragedy. Good morning, Eric Hedda. Good morning, Leah. And as we approach Memorial Day weekend, more people are going to be out boating, swimming. And unfortunately, there's risk that comes with that and accidents. And that's exactly what officers say happened at this creek, Oatka Creek in Scottsville. Uh, they got calls just before 9 p.m. Uh, people called 911 when they noticed someone drowning. A few bystanders even risking their lives trying to save this person, who we're told is a young man, no age yet, but the water current was too strong and they were unable to save. Him. When the Monroe County Sheriff's Office responded with assistance from other fire departments and DMT, it was too late. There were multiple people that were down here. Obviously, on a warm night, this is a pretty popular spot uh, here on River Road in Scottsville. And uh, it's very popular amongst teens. I've been on the job 15 years, and it's always there's always somebody here on a warm night. Sergeant Batone says this bridge we're standing on, George Bridge, is popular for people to jump off of, uh, but he can't say if that's how this young man entered the water. That's what they're trying to figure out, and they're interviewing witnesses for more information. In Scottsville, Eric had a cost, News 8. I'm so sad to hear about this. Our condolences to the family and friends. Thank you, Eric Hedda. As we learn more, we will share it with you on air and at rochesterfirst.com. Also breaking this morning, a woman sent to the hospital after a shooting at a church in Rochester. This happened at the Iglesia Ebenezer Church on Merrimack Street around 8 p.m. Police say a 47-year-old suffered at least one gunshot wound. The church was also struck. It's not clear whether she was the intended target in this shooting. This is the latest in Rochester in one of over 130 shootings in 2021, according to RPD. Well, comedian John Stewart and some advocates are back on Capitol Hill this morning. They are fighting for benefits for vets exposed to toxic burn pits while serving. A new bill would stop them from having to prove the government exposed them. And Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer joining us live from D.C. with much more on this. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning to you. Well, they are back here on Capitol Hill. John Stewart, veterans advocates, John Feel, a 9-11 first responder, all trying to make sure that veterans get the help they need when they come back from serving. If they were exposed to these toxic burn pits, uh, there are bills moving through the Senate here and in the House. The one that's going to be unveiled today will be a comprehensive measure. They're trying to bring all of these bills together uh, to try and make sure that they can get this done sooner, because for the veterans exposed to this toxic burn pit, time isn't on their side. And what's President Biden saying about this bill? Well, you know, President Biden shares stories often on the campaign trail and now in his presidency about his son, Beau, who passed away from brain cancer. And he has said a handful of times that he thinks his son's cancer may have been caused uh, by exposure to some of these base burn pits when he served in the Iraq war in 2009. So he's confirmed his support to senators in helping the veterans who come back from war, but he hasn't confirmed or endorsed any specific legislation here in Congress. All right, Kelly, thank you so much for that report. Some symptoms of a lasting burn pit exposure include eye irritation, burning of the throat, coughing, and difficulty breathing. Prosecutors examining former President Trump's businesses are said to have convened a special grand jury as part of their investigation. The move suggesting the Manhattan District Attorney may be preparing criminal charges. In a statement, Trump called the report, quote, a continuation of the greatest witch hunt in American history. Time now is 648. It's 71 degrees, but the temperatures are, are going down today, right, James? Uh, yeah, well, eventually they'll start to drop a bit as we get into tonight and tomorrow, but uh, we'll hold on for another 12 hours or so of the warmer air. So it's a mild uh, start. Uh, if you're going on that early morning run, it will be uh, muggy out there. Uh, probably the only time really where it's a comfortable run because this afternoon might get a little uncomfortable. If you're thinking about more casual exercise uh, on the golf course, the morning round is dry, but the afternoon round 
Watch out. We've got passing showers and thunderstorms. I will have a look at the bus stop forecast as well as a last glance at the eight-day forecast at the end of the show. Leah. All right. Looking forward to that. Thank you so much. We're taking a live look at your sunrise traffic report at this hour. 394, 95, 90, all running on time. There is one accident to report in Hilton on Lake Road at Lawton Road. In our family first segment this morning, how did you sleep last night? Millions of Americans report having a hard time sleeping lately. If you're one of them, you might want to take a closer look at your diet. Experts recommend eating healthy snacks like almonds, walnuts, and pistachios. They have magnesium, which could improve your sleep. Turmeric, found in golden milk, is known for its anti-inflammatory properties, which could help you sleep better as well. Another possible sleep aid, tart cherry juice. It contains a small amount of melatonin, and melatonin is a hormone that we have naturally in our bodies that rises right before we fall asleep. If I have it at night, I have no issues falling asleep, which is not always the case with other fruits or juices because of the sugar. Now, experts say alcoholic beverages might make you feel sleepy at first, but they can disrupt your sleep cycle. They recommend avoiding alcohol and no caffeine after 4 p.m. Doctors also warn against high fat or heavy meals before bed. In other news this morning, the city of Rochester holding a gun buyback program today. It's partnering with the state attorney general's office and the RPD. People can receive up to $250 for their firearms. The gun buyback will take place from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Church of Love Faith Center on Exchange Street. No identification is needed. No questions will be asked if you do choose to drop off your firearms. The Monroe County Legislature adopting a bipartisan law to curb use of dirt bikes and ATVs on public roadways last night. Local leaders called dirt bike racing up and down streets a safety hazard and illegal. The first offense, the vehicle is impounded and there's a $500 fine. The second, the vehicle is impounded and there's a $2,000 fine. But some lawmakers say that this bill will not solve the problem. But it's my belief that this legislation won't have much of a dent in the problem. And maybe we need to address the underlying issues, why this is the thing that they love to do, why this is the thing that brings them together. While this passed in the county, there is a separate proposal on the table for Rochester City Council, which has yet to be voted on. Now for the very latest on COVID-19. Local school districts are urging the state to give them more guidance on how to fully reopen schools next fall. Governor Cuomo says if COVID infection rates continue to go down and vaccination rates keep going up, all schools should be able to bring back students, all students next September. Some local superintendents agree. They say planning has to take place now, though, and they can't move ahead without specific COVID guidance from the state. I want my kids back, but I also need guidance that's going to allow me and help me to do that. So we have continued to urge and plead for that guidance for reopening in September to come now. Um, we don't want it in August. I don't want it late in July. I want it now. We're planning right now as if the guidance isn't going to change at all. So if that's the case, what is that going to look like at a high school, which is going to be um, pretty challenging to plan for. Well, right now, specific social distancing requirements are still in place, along with masking guidelines. The Rochester Riverside Convention Center will be offering the one-shot Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. That's today and tomorrow. This vaccine is available for anyone 18 and up. The clinic is open today from 9 o'clock this morning until 2 o'clock this afternoon. No appointments necessary. Walk-ins are welcome. Time now for the GRE Morning Business Report. Moderna says it plans to file for expansion of emergency use authorization in June of its coronavirus vaccine for children between the ages of 12 and 17. The company says its trial had the same effectiveness with adolescents as adults, along with similar side effects. Royal Caribbean says vaccines will be required to board its ships again. Travelers 16 and older departing from the U.S. or Bahamas on or before August 1st. You'll have to be fully vaccinated before setting sail. After August 1st, travelers as young as 12 must be fully vaccinated before travel. It's all part of Royal Caribbean's plan submitted to the CDC. 
Global Airlines starting to sidestep Belarus after a Ryanair flight was forced to land there, allegedly due to a security threat. After landing, a journalist was arrested. Uh, carriers, other carriers say they're avoiding that airspace. European authorities are urging other airlines to follow suit. United Airlines is offering vaccinated flyers a shot at winning free flights. The company says it applies to new or existing members of its Mileage Plus program. To take part, you have to upload your vaccination record to United's mobile app by June 22nd. Users will be entered to win a year's worth of free air travel for two. Talk about incentive there. Well, here's what some people might be talking about at the water cooler today. Food Network star Guy Fieri signed a three-year, $80 million contract to remain with the company to host uh, the host of diners, drive-ins, and dives, and other shows is the most popular and highest-grossing TV chef in history. According to Forbes, Fieri generated more than $230 million in 2020 ad revenue for the Food Network. Always fun to watch, but well, $80 million to eat. Yeah. Sign me up. Amazing. Please. Do you need a sidekick? Well, it's, it's such a great idea for a show. Traveling the United States, visiting cool restaurants, mm -hmm. and the small local ones. I know he's done a couple in western New York, so it's really neat to yeah. see that, right? Yeah, I always wonder how he, he eats so much, though. <laughs> right. You work out a lot, I guess. Yeah. And a little incentive with the 80 million there. Yeah, right. Keep going. It's, exactly. There you go. Well, I had to do this. I had to put the grill forecast in here. Uh, shout out to Guy Fieri there, who knows how to work a grill. Temperatures on the warm side this afternoon, and we're going to watch out for a couple of showers and thunderstorms. I think those could form really between about noon and 8 p.m. So we've got a wide gap but really only isolated showers and storms. Uh, so not a lot of folks seeing them, but there is a wide, uh, I guess I should say, a, um, a long time in which we could see those storms form. Bus stop forecast, the, geez, the year is really dwindling down, right? I think mm -hmm. we've got a couple more weeks left, right? Right. Yeah. Kids will be out of school. Yeah, my kid's a little too young. For I know. School, you don't have to worry so. about that yet. No, no. A couple of... Uh, oh, the adventures ahead for you, Mr. Gilbert. A couple of Lots years. Of adventures. Yep, yep. 80s uh, this afternoon. Watch out for a passing shower or a thunderstorm. But if it's a 2:30 drop off, you sh really shouldn't have uh, too many issues. Here's your eight-day forecast. We'll finish with this. A look at your Memorial Day weekend. It starts cool and ages well. By Monday, we're talking mid 70s, which will be nice to see. All right. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update in 30 minutes. CBS This Morning is coming up next. Stay with us. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.